Fasting is a spiritual exercise of learning how to focus on God, how to seek God's face. Fasting the right way will lead you to be really spiritual. Instead of you fasting to make people see so that you pretend to be spiritual, when people see you, you'll be like, oh, man of God, I'm fasting. Your time of fasting is a time of intimacy, whereby I don't really want to talk, I just want to enjoy your presence. I want to hear you. I want to hear your heart. I want to know you. Because there is no how you will hear his heart and know him and hear him talk to you that your life will not be transformed. It is his word and his direction that transforms your life truly. Why is it not exciting to want to fast? Why should you fast? And then what is the right way to fast? Now I want to talk about fasting in today's video because most times fasting feels so much like a burden and that is why when the word fasting is mentioned, someone would feel like, mm, I don't really want to do this, but I have to. Why do you have to feel that way? Number one, fasting is not a performance. I know most times some people feel like fasting is a performance to get God impressed. God doesn't want to be impressed with our fasting. And sometimes it may not be about getting God impressed. It may be about getting ourselves impressed, which is, which is to have pleasure in ourselves. Oh, I fasted for 30 days. I fasted for seven days. And it becomes a thing about your ego and your pride. It's no more for the purpose which you should fast. Why should you fast? Do you just fast so that people would see you as spiritual? And scripture says in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus told the disciples, When you fast, don't look gloomy and pretend to be spiritual. They want everyone to know they are fasting. So they appear in public looking miserable and disheveled. Believe me, they've already received their reward. When you fast as a performance to get people impressed about you, that you are spiritual, you've already received your reward. When you fast to get yourself impressed, you've already received your reward. So why then are you expecting anything from God if you fast that way? Number two, fasting is not a torture or a torment. I know you feel like you're tormenting your soul, you're tormenting yourself. That is what you feel like fasting is, but it is not. That is the fasting that we have been made to believe. Oh, torture yourself, torture your soul, torment your soul so that God won't torment you. Maybe sometimes we were told to fast when we commit sin. I remember the time that I kissed someone for the first time. I was in secondary school and I had this mindset that that was wrong. I had to go into fasting, pleading with God to forgive me, tormenting myself because I believe that if I torment myself that much, God will forgive me for committing a sin and all of that. So, and then I remember in, in church that time, when you commit a sin, they will give you fasting as a means of punishment. The mindset is that when you torment your soul with fasting, that God will forgive you. But that is not the basis for God's forgiveness. The death and resurrection of Christ, the payment of Christ at the cross has covered all our sins, past, present, and future. And I am careful to say that because it is scriptural. The Bible says, and your sins and your lawless deeds, I will remember them no more. So your fasting is not for God to forgive you of your sins because Christ already died for your forgiveness. Your fasting is not to torture your soul as a transaction for God to give you something good. It's not for you to put yourself in a place of torment as if to say, God, I've not eaten. Now let's get into a transaction. I'm going to fast and stay away from food so that you will bring blessings into my life. No, that is not the reason that God blesses you. It is not because of your fasting. So what then is fasting? Three, fasting is a spiritual exercise that has physical actions, which means I am staying away from food. And why do I stay away from food? Because food is a main cause of worry for us as human beings. Jesus said, why are you worried about what to eat, what to drink? Because most times we worry, what shall we eat, what shall we drink? It is a big worry in our life and it is a big distraction because food can become a distraction. That is why God says, let's remove this distraction. Let's stay away or abstain from this distraction and focus on God. Because fasting is a spiritual exercise of learning how to focus on God, how to seek God's face. That is what fasting is. And it is a spiritual exercise that benefits us. Now, Fasting the right way will lead you to be really spiritual. Instead of you fasting to make people see 
so that you pretend to be spiritual. When people see you, you be like, oh, man of God, I'm fasting. No, you're, you're somber now. It's not about that. It's actually about having to have the presence of God with you and know that this is a spiritual exercise, which means I am removing all the distractions in my life to focus. The main reason is so that I can hear God. So that I can focus on God, which means it is more than staying away from food. It also involves having to remove all the distractions from your phone, from social media, and every other thing that would distract you. Just give God that quality time. Number four, when you fast, talk less and listen more. When you fast, it is not a time for you to take time and lay out things you want God to do for you because you are fasting. When you fast, it is actually a time for you to hear God. Now, we talk about Moses fasting 40 days and 40 nights and staying in the presence of God on the mount. And that is the mindset that most times when people are fasting, they say, Moses went up to the mount, let's go up to the mount. Now, what is the picture of this? Moses did not even realize that he was fasting for 40 days. Moses didn't even, he wasn't even aware that he was away from food for that 40 days because he was absorbed in the presence of God. Now, true fasting is, I have the presence of God. And nobody truly goes to the presence of God, I really have a lot to say. Because once you are in the presence of God, you just want to behold His beauty. You just, you are amazed. You just want to stay there and be absorbed and be overwhelmed in that presence. And Moses was so overwhelmed in the presence of God. Now, studying Exodus, I realized that it was that space of 40 days that Moses received the law and all other ordinances and the patterns that God wanted him to design and build the temple and build from the place of the Ark of the Covenant to the seven lampstands and all the things that were in the temple, all the components of the temple, God gave him the pattern on the mount. So what does this portray when we fast? It means my time of dedication for fasting is a time whereby I get to receive a pattern from God on how to live my life. And this is a practical thing. When you fast, that's why I say, talk less and listen more. This is not for the time for you to go to God and tell God, please give me this, please give me that, please give me the third. You've been praying all time. Your time of fasting is a time of intimacy. Whereby, I don't really want to talk. I just want to enjoy your presence. I want to hear you. I want to hear your heart. I want to know you. Because there is no how you will hear his heart and know him and hear him talk to you that your life will not be transformed. It is his word and his direction that transforms your life truly. Now, let me not dwell on this, but this is something we can expound more. The fifth point, when you fast, it is not about what you can get physically. It is about what you can get internally, spiritually. Because most times we fast and pray to God to give us physical things like tangible things, commodities, material things. God, I'm fasting so that you can give me car. I'm fasting so that you can give me a house. I'm fasting so that you can bring this financial blessing. And I can tell you that God wants your attention. He doesn't want you to just come and talk, like I said in the last point. He wants you to come to his presence and just stay there because there is something that happens when you just staying in his presence. He fills you up. This is your time to muse. And this is the time that God awakens the creativity in you. This is the time that God can give you ideas that will last to the 10 years of your life. This is the time that God can awaken something in you that can spark up you getting all the external things you need. But first of all, you need this internal build up. And that is why it's advisable if you start your year, you start it with going to God and seeking the face of God by fasting. And I hope that this video is helping you to realize that fasting is more than just staying away from food. Because if it is about staying away from food, People are dieting just to checkmate their health, which means we could call them that they are fasting, which means they even fast more than you. So it's not just about staying away from food or abstaining from food. It's more about removing distractions from your life. And food is a big distraction, certainly for us as humans. So when you can remove that distraction, food and drink, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? You're not worried about that. And you remove your phone, the distraction of social media, you stay away from these. It is going to help you focus. It is going to help you listen. It is going to help you hear God. And let me say this as the last thing. Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights fasting. How 
He was in the presence of God, enjoying intimacy with God, which Matthew chapter 4 records. Same thing with Moses. He was in the presence of God and living, he did not even know that his face was shining because he spent time in the presence of God. But don't fight thinking, God, I want to leave you shining, shining your glory on my face. No. If you really enjoy the presence of God in your intimate time, your face will surely shine. Because your mind is transformed, your heart is transformed, you've experienced God, He has poured into you. It is a time of download. He has downloaded in you. You can't leave there and be empty. You will leave there feeling full. In fact, you feel like remaining there all through. That is the kind of experience that you can have and stay for three days, no food, no drink, and you are good to go. That is the kind of fast. It is something that we can learn and intentionally build up that when I go to God, my fasting should not just be staying hungry from 6 to 6 or for 3 days when I have not really experienced God's presence by studying His Word. It is in His Word that you are going to hear Him the most. When you stay in the Word of God, God is going to bring a lot of revelations to you. And all you need to do is, as He brings it, when you are out of fasting, it is for you to apply. Because Jesus... Staying in the wilderness for 40 days, he listened to the father, he hated the father, and when he came out, he said, my meat is to do the will of my father. On all through his ministry time, he did the will of the father, and he was able to walk in sync with the father, because he dedicated time to know the father's heart and be intimate with the father. I hope this will be an experience. I am Uwe McBan, this is my YouTube channel. Do well to hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. It is going to help YouTube spread this video to other people so that they can watch and be blessed also. Thank you and God bless you. Bye-bye.